Ray here, welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adenia Center for Education. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus. We are sharing truth today on when shame is good. <laughs> you know, and that's coming from Ezra chapter 8, 1 to 23. Let us pray and then after that we go into it together. God of heaven, we worship you and bless you, God, on account of who you are. Be glorified forever. Thank you for the night rest we had and the opportunity again to turn the pages of your word. We ask, oh God, as we do this this morning, let your spirit help us as always. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and grant to God that uh, your people will be maximally blessed on account of this this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, Ezra chapter 8 from verse 1. It's a lot of um, record about uh, who went with them, you know, in the, the heads of their families and the people that went with them and all that. You want to remember that um, um, the scribe, Ezra was a scribe, and the scribe in the Old Testament was not just uh, an egghead or a professor or an academic, it was also a recorder. So you could notice that that recorder aspect of the life of Ezra, the office of Ezra, is showing here. So from, from verse 1 to right up to verse 20, we're just giving an account of names, heads of families, and the others who followed them, you know, to play one role or the other in the course of this there. Should we call it expedition <laughs> or their journey? Praise God. So from 21 now read. Then I proclaimed the fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king saying the hand of our God is upon all those uh, for good who seek him. It's upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and treated, uh, entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. And um, uh, that, that, that's about it. Praise God. So you see, um, I said I proclaimed the fast there at the river. Let's say at the river bank where, where, where they, they all settled down briefly. He proclaimed the fast there. And... Um, he gave a reason for proclaiming the fast so that we can seek his face and get him to give us a right way for our little ones and for our possessions. Now, a fast here was proclaimed. A corporate fast was proclaimed. And it was done for a particular purpose for a particular reason. And I want to say that about us, the way we fast. Um, some of us, we just fast religiously. Ah, how can you say you are not fasting? How can you say you are Christian and you are not fasting? That's not it. A fast, you are fasting for a purpose. At times, yeah, some people say they, they, they are fasting regularly, but it's for a purpose. You are fasting regularly to keep yourself spiritually fit. You are fasting regularly because you want to uh, dedicate maybe a day or two unto God during the week to study better. To, to be more, to focus better on the study and fellowship of the Spirit. That's the purpose. It's not just because you are, how can a child of God not fast? That's not a reason. It, you have to have a purpose. Purposeful fasting is the one that is productive. Yeah. So these people, they had a purpose. They wanted God to give them clarity, to give them protection, also to guide them in the way, you know, as they were going. Because you see, they had. Um, a lot of things that were attractive to to any to the enemy and to robbers and highway robbers and, and all that. So they saw the face of God. How do we move? When do we move? How do we go about it? Uh, we, they also sought to pray, God, we need angelic protection for all of these things the king has released for us. We are carrying very, very valuable items, you know, that we are carrying and it's attractive. So Lord, we're going to need angel. That is the that was the reason for their a corporate fast and they did a good job of it and the bible says that god answered their prayer so let us learn to uh when we throw when we call it fast let it be for a reason let's not just be for the fasting sake it shouldn't be that praise god so they had a reason okay uh to protect he said they for him to see the right way for them their little ones and all our possessions that's what they said you know and uh uh, that's why they fasted and the Bible says that God answered them. The next thing it says, because I was ashamed to request of the king another escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Because you have spoken this way to the king. Now, 
um, he says, I was ashamed to go back to the king to ask for more. There is a need for some measure of personal pride, a little bit of it, some measure of personal dignity, some measure of um, what I call, what the Bible calls shamefacedness. Um, shamefacedness, we remember that with second, first Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, talks about shamefacedness among the qualities being counted for our women folk. So, he's not talking about something bad here, it's a quality, shamefacedness, a bit of shamefacedness. And, you know, in our own culture, we talk about it too. I, I'm, I'm, I come from the Yoruba uh, culture and they have what they call it you uh this is um, not in a bad way what he's trying to say is that you must have some measure of self-dignity a little bit of shame or shame facedness you know uh in the things you do that's why I, that's why i title this when shame is good even uh, some other parts of of this country they will say things like you know get shame you know something like that in other words you are supposed to have it <laughs> so there's a time a little bit of it is good so as to uh, maintain your dignity and self-respect and um uh yeah that's it or, or respect in the general sense for you the man said i was ashamed to go back to the king you know because i have personal dignity we have personal um uh, personal pride we have um, we have um this shamefacedness it must be there we don't go to the king and you have done so much for us especially when somebody has done so much for you you are not there must some, there would be, there should be some reticence in going back to that person for more there should be some recoiling in going back to that person for more that's when that kind of shame is good honest it, it, it's it's just um, um a good way to live believe me that's just a good the man said i was ashamed to, the, to go to the king to say all the yeah you should have a little bit of that now he gave some reason because they had boasted in god in our own case, we probably would just exercise our faith and say, I'm not going back there. I've boasted in God. God will provide for me. Yeah. Maybe they didn't have it that way. The way they knew to go about it was to pray and fast. But they gave the reason because we have gone to tell the man that our God is able to protect us. God normally protects people who are righteous and who are well before him. It is people who don't know him that he doesn't protect. You know, and then you now go to that person. Ah. Can't your God protect you anymore? He's <laughs> something like that. So he said, I was ashamed to go back and do that. So I got to pray. It's like you, you, you are telling God, Lord, we have gone to boast, boast to, you know, boast in you, boast in God. Yeah, we have gone to boast in you. So you are going to have to perform. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of thing that uh, these guys were doing, you know, and all that. And then they said, the hand of our God. Yeah, um, they, they, so they, they fasted and entreated God and God answered our prayer. Yeah. So they, they looked at the face of God and called upon his name and you know, entreated God means to, to, you know, to rub your hands in his, in his presence, ask him for favor, ask him for help. And they did something like that and God answered their prayer. Okay. So it's a beautiful one. It's a nice lesson to learn from here that at times in life, you know, after somebody has done a lot for you, there should be some little bit of shame in going back to say you are you are looking for even more. <laughs> you know you should you should you should have you should have something like that. Yes, Mr. Reticence, and it gives you self respect at the end of the day. Thank you very much for sharing time with us this uh, fine morning. I want to request again that you help your to do your best to grow this channel. We really uh, want to thank God for the for the little increase we have enjoyed. It's so beautiful. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for that. But we can do more to make more people uh, enjoy what is being shared from this channel. God bless you. Thank you for being there. I appreciate it.